Good morning. It's Wednesday, January 6, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Confidence to Go On. And our scripture is Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 1. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. I've been sent out to tell others about the life he's promised through faith in Christ Jesus. I'm writing to Timothy, my dear son. May God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord give you grace, mercy, and peace. Timothy, I thank God for you, the God I serve with a clear conscience just as my ancestors did. Night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. I long to see you again, for I remember your tears as we parted, and I'll be filled with joy when we're together again. I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I know that same faith continues strong in you. This is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. When Hillary Clinton wrote It Takes a Village nearly 25 years ago, I had one of those bristling moments of ambivalence. Didn't take me long to sort out my mixed feelings. I loved the quotation adapted from an African proverb. My bristling was due to the political Grand Canyon between myself and Mrs. Clinton. While political convictions might land on entirely different universes, the impact of a universal truth cannot be denied. And that effect of a culture, the collective communities of humanity, upon a child's outcome is only somewhat measurable but it is palpable. Putting genetics aside for a blessed moment, children are blank slates when newborn. Parents are primary in early formation, but as these little ones begin to engage in the larger population, the endless combinations of forces, good and evil, blessed and damning, do formative work. For some, that work is paralyzing, stopping us dead in the water. For others, it's empowering, propelling challenges and change which lift us to higher planes. But virtually none of it is achieved in a vacuum. The village will have its effect. In the intricate and complicated world of the 21st century, the village is shrinking and exploding both at the same time. The shrinking part is in actual human contact. Relationships are conducted via glowing screens and phone trees. And this, paradoxically, by a generation that claims authenticity in relationships as its hallmark. The exploding part is knowledge at the fingertip, the supposed answer to whatever ails us. This shrinking and exploding is either a definition of progress or implosion. Depending on your point of view, it will either lead us to the Great Society or Armageddon. I give as evidence to this whole line of thought Paul's protege, Timothy, a timid man in an extrovert's occupation. Timothy was gifted by God with faith, which was nurtured by Eunice and Lois. Through prayer and the support of his mentor, Paul, Timothy was installed as a pastor. Years of Christian training and nurturing in Tim's village, a cocoon of mother, grandmother, and Paul, the traveling evangelist, yielded an introverted, shy, uncertain pastor-teacher who needed bucking up occasionally. These few verses teach us another universal truth. Whatever we have become that's attributed to the upbringing of quote-unquote our village, There must be an ongoing support system to make any lasting use of that which God has allowed. Paul was that support system for Timothy, praying and writing to him. In short, what Timothy needed was confidence to move forward, especially against the uncertainty of the culture he was going to confront. That confidence was energized by Paul's timely influence. And that kind of village influence is going to be the gold standard as we enter 2021. For you today, 
A question or two. First, who is Paul, Lois, or Eunice to you, giving you the confidence to go on? Secondly, like unto the first, to whom are you, Paul, Lois, or Eunice, and are you fanning the flames of confidence for them to go on? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.